Hello everybody. Welcome to the Labyrinth of Limitations. This is an episode where we'll have a PDF, so check the um, video description please, and you can get the PDF from my website. Um, so uh, we're talking about major third relationships, what I call the extended family. And uh, so it's going to be movement on a dominant seventh scale um, and exploring whole tone kind of sounds, but different than the whole tone scale more related to the dominant seven plus five diminished scale, which is what we're going to use, but in a special way. So um, we're going to look at, uh, uh, say, the end of the middle section of all the things you are. Um, but first, let's just make sure, um, review concepts about family, if you haven't seen those. And Barry Harris's family is really important. So that is, if I have C dominant seventh, well, there is minor third related dominant sevenths are all family with C. That's because C dominant seventh is almost C sharp diminished. And then if I take any of the other notes besides C sharp and lower them by half step, I get three other diminished chords. And those are all family to C. And so that means C moves to those chords smoothly by chromatic voice leading, which is important. Um, similarly, uh, C major triad is almost C augmented. And C augmented, if I lower one of the other two notes, becomes E and A flat or G sharp. So that relationship, um, instead of minor third relationships, it's major third relationships. And that's what's going to go into what we're doing today. And we're looking at something like this. section of all the things you are going back into the A section and there's that C augmented that happens it goes E to C and those are extended family major third relationships and the C is marked augmented it's an augmented sound people play people play lots of like whole tone types of sounds um, those kinds of sounds are nice but and there are other sounds that aren't so whole toning that you could explore in soloing um, like playing uh, E from so, yeah, you could do something like that, uh, maybe better though, but, um, but, uh, but we're going to look at the whole tone type of sounds. So I'm playing E major, and then I could play C augmented, I could play C dominant 7 flat 5, which is found in the whole tone scale that C augmented is found within. That's right, so we get this one. Sorry, that's a very So that was kind of moving into that. But we are going to look at instead of playing C dominant seven flat five. What about E dominant seven flat five, which is at the top of the scales of scales, if you've seen the episode where I talk about that. The scale of scales is everything you might do on a dominant seventh. So, uh, or with scales of chords, that is. So you got C dominant seven flat five, C dominant seven, the octatonic, which is based on C sharp diminished. You got the six on the five and the tritones minor. And then you got this E dominant seven flat five, which is actually C with a ninth and a sharp five. So that's a ninth, and a sharp five, dominant seventh, and a third on C. But if I just commit to thinking of this in the way that I'm familiar with the shape, which is as a dominant seven flat five, I could name it E dominant seven flat five. So in other words, whenever I see C seven, I could think a major third up and play dominant seven flat five diminished. And that would sound like this. So that's, that 
that's what that then that's playing out of it a bit. So um, that's a nice sound, I think. So that's that's what I'm doing here. I have two musical examples I put in the PDF. Um, you could do things like so at the end it goes so so you go so I go something like you could do six on the five into E dominant seven flat five, which is pretty. Um, so. So if we accept that, then there's another one still. So you could do C dominant seven flat five, you could go up a major third and play E dominant seven flat five, or you could go up another major third and do G sharp dominant seven flat five. And that sounds like this. Well, no, uh, let me do that one more time. And I go. There we go, that's it. So I gotta go. So that would be G sharp dominant seven flat five. Here's the G sharp, which is a root of this chord. Which is pretty. So that wraps them up. There's three options because um, if I keep going with this game up major thirds, I'm just going to get to things that are actually the same as what I've already encountered. In other words, uh, G sharp, I go up a major third, and um, well, I get to C. Um, if I go up in whole steps, like a whole tone scale, it's also this is G sharp dominant seven flat five, E dominant seven flat five, back to C dominant seven flat five, even though G flat is in the bass, this is C dominant seven flat five because of that near symmetry. And then I go up from there, and then this is G sharp again. So it's just C, E, G sharp. That's it. And uh, so it outlines an augmented triad, which is nice. So something to look at when looking at these then is what are those diminished chords when we're doing the dominant seven flat five? When I started to look at it, I wanted to check that out because I wanted to make sure that my ear wasn't deceiving me and that I was doing something that works. Um, and it does. It works with my ear just fine. I think it will with yours too when you look at it. So I'm looking at C dominant seven flat five. And I know that it's diminished works because that's just the one that goes to C dominant seven flat five that we're used to playing on C. What about E dominant seven flat five? This is the diminished for that. And that is the same diminished that I'm going to do for the, the minor six substitutes. So like say playing the six on the five. That's a pretty sound, and I might, um, I might do that. I might play one of those into the other. So I might do the six on the five, and I might go like, let me see. So something like that. So that's using the shared diminished between G minor 6, which I'm using as a 6 on the 5 on C, and E dominant 7 flat 5, which is that top of the scale of scales, if you're familiar with that, the um, dominant 7 flat 5 and major 3rd up from C. So now let's look at the one and major 3rd up from that, which is G sharp dominant 7 flat 5. So G sharp dominant 7 flat 5 has this diminished. And so that's not the one from the minor six chords. That's not the one from the dominant seventh chords for C, but it is the one that expresses C. So this is from, this is the on chord in the, uh, the chord that is the main chord in the octatonic that I would play over C. So this has C sharp in it. So I can resolve that straight into it. But that means that those notes sound good when I'm playing over C7. So I could go like, I think it's particularly pretty. So. Too long there, but that's, you know, so those are pretty things to do. So all of those diminished work. So then let's look at how those diminished relate to each other. We've talked about this 
in other episodes about um, other scales, like say, for example, if I play um, the six on the five, um, G minor six on C7, and I go to this diminished, and then I go down with this diminished, and then I go down, now I can go to C7, and that's, that's the way those diminished, uh, I move the diminished down by half step. So we're gonna look, we're gonna imagine C, E, and G sharp on a clock face, moving in clockwise motion, and this is in the PDF. And so I'm gonna go from C dominant seven flat five to its diminished, and now I'm gonna move this diminished up a half step, which becomes the diminished for E dominant seven flat five, and then to its diminished, and move that up a half step, and then I go to G sharp dominant seven flat five to its diminished, Sorry, and then to its diminished. Scoot that up a half step, and now I'm back to C. So that full scale is C to its diminished, E, sorry, C to its diminished, scoot it up, E to its diminished. And I could do contrary motion and make it sound a little bit more clever, maybe. So. doing there what I'm thinking is I'm thinking C little little shell chords so this is just root fifth and seventh of C and I'm going to go by contrary motion taking these notes that are a third go out to a fifth like I talked about in the first little labyrinth episodes so I take this third move it out to a fifth move this up a half step because I have to for that other diminished and I'm just going to move down to a six here I go. so that's you know, that would be found in this diminished, but that's the sixth, and then I'm going to go to the same voicing, it could be here or here, this is root, flat five, seventh, do the same thing, I'm going out to a fifth, out to a sixth, which is pretty. So that's the way those relate, you can move amongst the scales by understanding how those diminished move to each other, which is nice. So then, um, you know, I have some examples from All the Things You Are. Um, we talked about the parts of the chord. So that's, that's important just to understand this C dominant seven flat five has the root, the flat five, the seventh, and the third. E dominant seven flat five has the ninth sharp five, seventh, and third. And then G sharp dominant seven flat five has the ninth sharp five root and uh, flat five. So if I want that sound, that flavor, I can focus on it by doing this. And that will keep hitting me with the sharp five, flat five, and ninth kind of in the sound, which is a pretty sound. I can switch to whole tone at any point. So, you know. So that's this. flat major, whoops, so the E. Whoops. There we go. just those kind of moves so it's it's nice where you see whole tone kind of moments but you could make a whole tone moment out of almost any dominant seventh chord I and mean, it's up to you if you feel like it sounds appropriate then it is you know so it's maybe that's just your style that you like to hit whole tone a lot there's been a bunch of people that have done that and it sounds great and it still sounds kind of fresh to me it sounds cool so um these are the things to explore in the pdf there is some stuff at the end of the document that's just explaining the kind of theory behind this that I kind of touched on in this episode, uh, talking about it. And then there's a little bit about how to explore this in the Labyrinth of Limitations app because there's particular keystrokes that you can do that will move you uh, uh, through the um, dominant seven flat five um, diminished scales that are related by major thirds in this way. So you're exploring the extended family. Thank you for joining me. I hope that this has been uh, understandable uh, to watch. Please leave comments. Those are very motivating to hear what you guys think. 
and um, I will be following up with more. Been on a little hiatus, but I'm back now. Uh, thanks a lot, and uh, keep practicing.